humanity, people, are three and a thousand years old. You gotta, you gotta internalize this. And almost everything interesting is happening today and not a hundred thousand years ago. So being alive today is such an amazing gift that you can be part of it because it is radically making the world a more democratic, a more equitable, a more opportunistic, a wealthier place. We already live as a generation twice as long as our grand-grandparents. And that's where education really is. It's often underappreciated how important education is as a driver to the world. And with these inventions, we are now able to finally truly democratize education and give the Stanford level education to everybody in the world. Not a day goes by without someone saying, AI, you, you must have been entirely asleep if you don't agree with me. It's disturbing, it's intense, it's unpredictable, it's exciting. Um, it's coming, uh, all of us. And if you believe um, people like Sam Altman who runs OpenAI, it's at the brink of doing all the work all of us can do every day, at least the intellectual work we do. Uh, maybe not the people work, maybe not the empathy, but certainly the thinking, the problem solving, the planning, the research, the drafting, what, what many of us do on a daily basis. So let me demystify it and start at the basics. What really is AI? AI, artificial intelligence, a word that's now 70 or 69 years old, intended to use the computer to mimic the human brain. A discipline, which I've been part of for 35 years, that often failed, that had false promises, false starts. But in the last five years, has seen an incredible resurgence with some very basic new ideas. And what are those new ideas? The basic idea that really ties everything together can be described in a single slide, okay? It's the idea of prediction. Not just one brain thinking about things, but 128 people simultaneously doing the work in different dimensions. What power would you get if you put this all together? So it's really just a numbers game. And I'm saying this to demystify. I wanna uh, explain to everybody that this is not about some evil power that's gonna take over the world. It's just a lookup table. Okay, so when you hear people say, we gotta regulate AI, it's dangerous, it's, it's harmful, and oh my God, all the way to what Elon Musk says, it's gonna take over the world and kill us all. I would say slow down, okay, breathe. All we do is predict the next word. It can't be that bad, okay? If I had given this presentation five years ago, I would have argued one thing that people have that AI will never have is creativity. I said this, and I was dead wrong. Because when you go to, this is a famous painting competition, Colorado State Fetish Arts Competition a year and a half ago, that, that competition um, was for human painters, a big one with like thousands of submissions, and the winning entry was an AI uh, picture. Um, very much upset the art world because now it felt like maybe, maybe either machines are now creative, but that makes no sense because they just go through past data. Or maybe artists are not creative, or that would be horrible. We cannot ever permit that artists are not creative because they're called creative. So where do we end up morally in this conundrum? And I don't have an answer, but it turns out if you look at tons and tons of art and find the statistics, you can create original new art. But I want to upfront say, I'm not here to tell you the future. Um, those of you who are in the operating business that take away from today to try something, you have to invent the future. The, the future will be very non-linear. The, the type of things I can see today, if I give this talk again five years from now, I'll be completely different. And look back and say, oh my God, I was wrong. You know, with everything I said. So, so take this with a grain of salt. It's, it's a world and a life now where prediction has to become hard for, for the human race. So let's get into the journey and say, what if AI is so strong, it can get to know you, who you are. And I think that's where almost all the uh, opportunity lies uh, in retail um, to really get a much better 
understanding of your customers' needs and desires and wishes. And that is going to be a rabbit hole that's going to be busy with us for the next 20 years. In the end of it, it'll be so strong uh, that you can give a retailer like Corporal just your credit card and it just buys the right stuff for you without you even looking. They don't measure themselves on the societal impact and retail numbers, what have you. They measure themselves on very abstract metrics like the abstract American Mathematical Association uh, fluidity test or something like that. Um, so they are also chasing abstract goals. Um, we as a society have to take these tools or should take these tools and turn them into real benefits to the people. And that's where we're lagging. And the best way to do this is to play with it, to really play with it. And we now live in a world where everybody can play with it. It's really important to take people along on the journey. Um, when you zoom out, all the great technologies have made the world better for everybody. There's no one in the world who says, I hate refrigerators or I hate light switches. They're good for everybody. And the same will be the case here. And the same will be the case for your employees. The reason why employees tend not to do this is because they're scared. Right? They ask, I have a family, I have a mortgage, I have kids in school. What's going to happen to me, right? And it's so easy to hear in these public announcements, all the jobs will go away, right? I very carefully said, they might do everything we do today. I did not say the jobs will go away because we're going to pick new jobs. But what are these jobs? Will I be qualified? This is scary. We're moving from a world where you could get a skill set and then for the rest of your life, that skill set generated income to a world where every five years, every three years, the skill set shifts. And if you don't shift with that skill set shift, you're going to lose income. And that's, that's unfortunately true. And that's super scary. Um, how do you take people along? A lot of it is communication. Continuously be transparent, communicate what intentions are, and then let them participate. I mean, people might have ideas. People might have good ideas. People might want to try something. Give them, and obviously in a, in a tightly run business, that's, there's limits, but can they try something? Can they experiment something? Can they find like-minded people who want to try something similar? Mm -hmm. And run these micro-experiments. And if a group of people, um, this happened in Skunk Brooks, if a group of engineers had a big enough idea, they were taken out of the Lockheed Martin mainstream business into the Skunk Brooks building with the next year or so they could try it out. Is there a pathway for people to engage and, and shape this up and test things?